We all have the ability to start a crowdfunding campaign, the ability to make a video and share our brilliant idea to the world. And although sometimes that works out pretty great, other times, not so much. And today I have gone for a really appealing title, right? <laughs> Perhaps too appealing. Clickbaity almost, yeah? How can this guy be Indiegogo's biggest scammer when I've covered stuff like the Vega Plus in the past? Well, whereas the Vega Plus got around £500,000 and a few people did get the device, although I'm sure they wish they didn't, this particular campaign owner managed to get a shade over four and a half million dollars and not one person got the device. And yes, even though I already told you guys the outcome, you know that this guy is going to be found guilty. Just like the Vega Plus video, it's not the outcome that's the exciting part of the video, it's the journey. And today I think it's about time that we shine some much needed light onto the Dragonfly Future Phone. Hi everybody, I'm Daniel Robertson, aka DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room, and this is Indiegogo's biggest scammer finally found guilty. But stop right there, because before we go ahead, I just want to give a stupidly big shout out to Raid Shadow Legends, who were kind enough to sponsor the video. In case you didn't know, Raid is without a doubt one of the most ambitious mobile games of 2019, and as seen here, the character designs and assets are pretty damn impressive. And in short, Raid is going to be the most immersive experience you're going to find on your smartphone. And the best part is... It's free to download right now using the links below. The storylines are great, the characters are great, and the customizations and upgrades have become very addictive, I must say. Just look at the detail, guys. <laughs> Quick reminder, it's a mobile game. And it's a mobile game that is growing in popularity incredibly quickly, with over 10 million players worldwide. <laughs> Don't take my word for it, because if you go over to the Play Store, you will see that Raid has over 200,000 reviews with a pretty much perfect score. And if you do join now, there's a new rewards program for new players where you can get new daily login rewards for your first 90 days in the game. Plenty of collecting, plenty to do, and plenty of champions, with El Hain being my personal favourite. Download the game using the link below to get yourself 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program. Anybody out there that has tried a dual screen setup will tell you that once you've used it, you can never go back. However, from time to time, you've simply got no choice. Your phone is single screen, your tablet, and most notably, your laptop. We tried to make do, but there really isn't much we can do as turning a handheld device into a dual screen setup will make it too big and clunky, and doing the same with a laptop or tablet is both fat and ugly, but also takes way too much processing power shooting up the cost. But with all that said, we perhaps kind of do want it to happen and there have been plenty of attempts at making it work with the most common being the inclusion of a tablet or phone plugged in and then bolted onto the side. I suppose you could say that we want all of these devices pushed together into one cool unique device. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Well, thankfully we have Jeff Batio here to save the day. But who is Jeff? Well, back in the early 2000s, Jeff Batio, the inventor, founder, and CEO of Zentex Technologies, created this, the Flip Pad Voyager. Released in, well, pretty much zero quantities back in 2002, we'll get to why in a minute, this sexy for the time looking system had a massive price tag of $4,995, it had a 20 inch screen, which is obviously cut in half, it includes 4 USBs, an Ethernet port, Firewire, 2 PCMCIA slots, and a modem, among other things. Yes, 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 it's all very impressive, although completely out of anybody's price range. This little device, which is so rare that there isn't even one video on YouTube about it at all, was indeed the seeds of Mr. Batio's eventual crowdfunding project. 
During the run-up to its release, Jeff did quite a few interviews promoting it, so you can find loads of information about the 850 MHz Athlon processor, its 128 MB of RAM and its floppy drive. You just can't find anybody that actually owns one, except for one, weirdly enough, that did get sold on eBay back in 2008 with a starting bid of $99. No idea who it went to or how much for, mind you. As stated, this impressive looking machine was never released and according to Jeff himself, that was due to the betrayal of a few different shareholders and the company's manufacturer. But that's not 100% true, is it Jeff? You see, as this video goes on, you will discover just how much of a scumbag Ian Jeff was, eventually screwing over his future backers of the eventual Indiegogo campaign, which we will get to, as that was when the entire subreddits were formed to take down this individual, and a crazy amount of background checking on this guy was done, and yes, we have in fact got a little ahead of ourselves, but still... It was in this subreddit that we found the real reason that the Zentex Voyager wasn't released all of those years ago. Basically, Jeff held a meeting on November the 1st, 2000, and at this meeting he showcased the Voyager to potential investors hoping that they would buy stocks in Zentex. $3.3 million was the eventual sum that they got, and they got this by making, according to court documents, oral misrepresentations stating that... All necessary production arrangements were ready for mass production, that the company that was mass producing it had completed the tooling required for mass production, everything needed to make the device was already done and all money invested would just go on marketing and that the device presented was made by the manufacturers. All of which was obviously lies and fully goes against Jeff's own version of events found on the Zentex.com's website. And yes, he does indeed forget to bring up the fact that he was taking out loans from these investors' marketing money for his own personal use, to pay for things such as past due deals, his own personal living expenses, card payments, and of course, the odd vacation too. So yes, it all gives a very good indication into the sort of person that we're dealing with here, doesn't it? Jeff Batio, the dynamic futurist. This is a term I coined myself to represent somebody who doesn't see the future based on studying the trends being created by others, but instead is someone who helps to create the future by dynamically acting to create and make a better world for us all. Think of Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, Bill Gates and Steve Jobs to name but a few. <laughs> yes. Jeff thinks quite a bit of himself, doesn't he? Which is why, as soon as Zentex went down the drain, another company emerged. Introducing company number two, called Armada Systems LLC. And Jeff did what he did best and created another product that I believe is related to this patent. Yep, very similar to what we had before, and over the next four years he got himself another 75 investors to drop another $500,000. <sighs> Again, Armada Systems produced nothing, and this time, enough was enough. Again, via the Wayback Machine, we can actually see an order of probation from the Secretary of State in Illinois that reads... It is hereby ordered that, pursuant to the authority granted by Section 11F of the Act, Respondents Jeffrey A. Badio and Armada Systems LLC and their partners, officers and directors, agents, employees, affiliates, successors and assigns are prohibited from offering or selling securities in or from this state until the further order of the Secretary of State. It all sounds bad, doesn't it? And for those that don't understand, it basically means that Jeff is quite literally banned from selling securities, as he calls it, which is just a fancy term for shares, within the state of Illinois. No more stealing from local investors, right? Surely the sum of around $4 million is enough. He quite literally can't get away with this anymore. Jeff has now got two failed companies under his belt. He has local investors not wanting to do anything with him and because of that order of probation, he couldn't work with them even if he wanted to. This is quite literally the situation that Jeff found himself in. It begs the question, where else is there to go for someone like Jeff? Hmm.
<laughs> yes, screw the state. That small time back in 2014, websites like Indiegogo and Kickstarter were huge. Some of the site's biggest projects came from around that year and backers were in full force, myself included. And as his next attempt at a dual screen laptop hadn't actually been made yet, he decided to steer clear of Kickstarter and instead go over to Indiegogo where, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a prototype or not. Introducing the Dragonfly. By folding and transforming, Dragonfly provides the devices you already use in an elegant new form, creating one device out of three to truly simplify your life. With its dual displays, everything from working, playing, and communicating becomes a breeze. Dragonfly's versatility makes having to buy multiple devices, accessories, and data plans a thing of the past. Welcome to the future. So whilst these sexy animations show up in the campaign's video, I think it's worth talking about the ups and downs from Jeff's side by doing something like this. The upside to doing a campaign is obviously less people knowing what you're talking about and you get loads of investors rather quickly, which is exactly what happened. But the downside is quite the opposite. For every backer that knew no better, there was an onlooker thinking to themselves, wait, this can't be right. We obviously all know that nothing came from this in the end, but put yourself in the mindset of a 2014 onlooker. This i7 laptop with two screens, 8GB of RAM and a minimum 8 hour battery life with a detachable Android phone offering 3GB of RAM, wireless charging, a Snapdragon 801 processor, smart pen and <laughs> 4 cameras was only 658 quid or $800. Even by today's standards, for something like this, that's pretty cheap, but back then especially, it just seemed stupid. Something that's only slightly bigger than a dime included all of these features and weighed less than half the weight of a current i7 for the time. The goal was only $10,000 which I'm sure we can all agree was a pretty easy target to hit for a product that was obviously going to be this impressive. Yes, it's obvious that this magic machine was either going to be nothing like the renders show or simply it just wasn't going to get released. Which, well, spoiler alert, it didn't. But, <laughs> would you believe it, we have in fact got a little ahead of ourselves, once again. Because would you look at this? <laughs> Two campaigns. Yep, the campaign I just showed you was indeed the second dual screen laptop campaign they'd ever done. And nope, they never went anywhere with the first one either, even though that too did hit target. And as stated earlier, Kickscammer fans, this was when the internet blew up and those subreddits entirely dedicated to the campaign started to emerge. Now, even though obviously nothing much of anything was done behind the scenes, the updates did actually surprisingly come fairly frequently. And it was here that the backers and subreddits had the most amount of fun pulling apart the endless amounts of excuses and 3D renders that Jeff and his new co-host, Bridget Hogan, were showcasing in every every single post. Here's a few of my favorite future phone subreddit findings. There's that time that they were caught literally just ripping off somebody else's design, including mock-up designs that were also called the Dragonfly several years earlier. There was the rebate scheme pushed later in the campaign's life that would apparently give backers 99% of their money back on top of receiving the device. There was the time that Redditors actually found the duo's registry, proving that they're not just a couple of work colleagues, but instead in a very serious Bonnie and Clyde-like relationship, which they actually tried to hide from backers by deleting said registry. But best of all was the update video that finally showcased the prototype. What's wrong with it? Well, it's fake. The device is fake. The reactions are obviously fake. But best of all is that this whole video was fake as it was actually filmed two years prior. And when the awesome people over on Reddit discovered this due to the emails shown within the video, Jeff himself replied saying that the image was royalty free and used for marketing purposes only. Even given a link as to where he got it. Problem was, well, one, it wasn't royalty free as seen by the watermark, and was actually an Android screen grab of a Blackberry device, something this system was simply not. 
He then backtracked and changed the upload video to a different screen grab. But does this mean that this is a new video of a new prototype? No. And guys, this really is where the Future Phone subreddit shines. <laughs> Check this out. As seen here, it seems that Bridget is in a coffee shop. Thankfully, user Hex4Def6 recognized that coffee shop and gave examples of this and the pizza place that she was in too. Jingles Bo Bingles, who originally posted the claim, obviously got knocked down when Jeff claimed that the image was just simply from Google, you know, which it was. But that didn't stop him as further investigation showed a chalkboard in the background at the pizza restaurant and when looking painstakingly through old posts of that pizza restaurant's own Facebook page, he did indeed link the chalkboard to a post made exactly two years prior proving once and for all that this was indeed an old video come on that deserves a round of applause all round i do love the internet sometimes <laughs> basically nothing was working here this shows nothing besides a slick looking 3d printed model this video and all the other updates again show absolutely nothing all this information was created at the very beginning of the campaign's life and then slowly drip fed to backers throughout the campaign's life to give the impression that stuff was getting done when it obviously wasn't why because all of this was going on whilst the duo was continuing to earn money via Indiegogo's in-demand service, which basically leaves donations open after a campaign ends. And on top of this, whilst very solid accusations were being made that Jeff and Bridget simply couldn't answer, Indiegogo was ignoring the complaints and still promoting the campaign via its own social media. Concerned onlookers constantly put down a dollar or two to join the campaign just so they could warn backers. However, Jeff and Bridget clocked onto this rather quickly and refunded the majority of small backers' pledges and deleted their comments in an attempt to make the campaign look as clean and crisp as possible. What this basically did was pump up the average amount spent by most backers until the majority of the ones that were left were the ones that purchased the unit itself, which, as stated, was £657 or eight. Which is, for each individual backer on this campaign, a darn sight lot more than the majority of campaigns that I've shown on this channel in the past. Now, shortly after this fiasco, a month or so later, the duo put on one last post and then pretty much disappeared. Just like Jeff's two previous companies, his new business license then expired, meaning he couldn't even trade even if he did have the crap tops. The campaign was closed and that was the end of the magical Dragonfly future phone. But it wasn't the end for Jeff as he found himself in court over this and even though several court dates got pushed back, the angriest of backers clubbed together as part of a victim list and he was finally found guilty of all 12 charges of fraud against him with each one holding a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison. His sentencing is now to be held on September 3rd of this very year. So guys, please do make sure you subscribe to find out what this huge scammer's outcome will be in a future episode of Kick Scammer News. I wanna take hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. I wanna give a big massive shout out to Raid again. Thank you very much guys for sponsoring this video. That's, you know, awesome. And uh, obviously I wanna give another big shout out to Kim Justice who provided a little bit of a voiceover for this episode. But anyway, guys, let's get to the Patreon to always help the show. With an extra big shout out going to Gary Pinkett, that retro video gamer, Mantis, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Ben Jackson, Jonathan Haywood, Kevin King, Christopher Turnbull, Phil Lowlands, Tomic Grabowski, Retro to Next Gen, Hawk89, Dina Robertson, Dunn, Lefty Intrigued Gaming, Abby Morris, Tim Labonte, Asobi Quang, DX, Tim Lunn, Hernanaz, Pixels.Limited, aka Samuel Victor, Red the Beard, Conrad Constantine, Pretendo, 64, Creamy Elephant, Casey Garner, Blitz, Hedgy, King Link Reviews, Gemma Mr. T shirts, Wobbles and Bean, The Wonder Ducks, Yield Hamburglar, Bew Wright, Dan Petit, Mike H. Fell, Lucas Softel, Gregory Arden, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Sonic's Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus Kimo Cut, Tyndall, June, The Geeky Dad, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Paul Float G, and of course, Petty Mew. If you want to get your name shouted out, get your name shown, come see what I'm working on and all 
of the other usual stuff that these Patreons always get with my big bloggy posts that I'm always putting up there. Uh, thanks for reading, guys. Uh, yeah, then, you know, do click the link that you see on the screen if you want to support the show by buying any of the games that you see on the screen. There'll be a link in the description over to Play Asia for those. As always, they also help the show. Well, I think that's enough plug-in for now, isn't it? But yes, this is DJ Slope signing out. And hopefully, I'll see you all next time.